Tom Cruise killed it for Mission Impossible and French Spider-Man Alain Robert aced it for inspiration. Everyone loves Dubai's Burj Khalifa. But how was the world's tallest tower built? And how are its elevators, the world's third fastest, operated? Building Burj Khalifa needed design, engineering genius and creativity. Skidmore Owings & Merrill was the architecture firm behind the design and engineering of the tower. Its key considerations included the impact of wind forces and constructability. The design employs a buttressed core, which has each wing of the building buttressing the others through a six-sided central core. To build high, you must dig deep. Burj Khalifa's superstructure is supported by a large, reinforced concrete mat, which is in turn supported by 192 board reinforced concrete piles. The mat is 3.7 meters thick and was constructed in four separate pores, totaling around 12 and a half thousand cubic meters of concrete. Bauer, with Middle East foundations, took on much of the piling work, which required bores to be sunk for cast in situ piles to a depth of 43 meters. Around 45,000 cubic meters of concrete weighing more than 110,000 tons, was poured for the foundations. That's equivalent to 18 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The tower also used 192 piles running to a depth of more than 50 meters. The overall construction process used 39,000 tons of steel rebar. Laid end-to-end, -end, the rebar used in the tower would extend over a quarter of the way around the world. For the construction of the tower, BASF developed a special concrete mix that was pumped to a height of more than 600 meters without segregating. Over a period of about 32 months, a high-pressure Putzmeister pump and two others delivered more than 165,000 cubic meters of concrete. This is equal to about 66 Olympic size pools. Three Favel Favco cranes were also used for the project. All three were diesel cranes with various specs. Installing these cranes was relatively straightforward as sections of the cranes could be moved up with the completion of new levels. Getting the towers down, however, required a little more lateral thinking. The first high-level crane was moved down in November 2007 to level 99 to serve as a future recovery crane. The next high-level crane came down in October 2008, leaving one prominent machine at the top. Another smaller crane had to be lifted to floor 159. With a crane on this floor, as well as the one on level 99, the dismantling process was ready to begin. Burj Khalifa was an international collaboration between more than 60 contracting and consulting companies from all over the world. At the peak of construction, more than 12,000 technicians and contractors were on site every day, representing more than 100 nationalities. Legacy Arcadis Outfit Hyder was appointed as supervision consultant with responsibility for overseeing the execution of MEP works. A joint venture of ETA, Hitachi and Voltas was awarded the building's MEP contract. Seven double-story mechanical floors housed the equipment that brought Burj Khalifa to life. Distributed around every 30 stories, the mechanical floors housed the electrical substations, water tanks, pumps, and air handling units that were essential for the running of the building. All elevators have been supplied and installed by Otis. The lifts are grouped to align with the floor layout, offering passengers a direct express service to their destination by bypassing other floors. The crowning glory of Burj Khalifa is its telescopic spire comprised of almost 4,000 tons of structural steel. The spire was constructed from inside the building and jacked to its full height using a hydraulic pump. There you go, that's a quick summary of how Burj Khalifa was built. Of course, there's a lot more detail that went into the project. To learn more about how it was built from start to finish, visit constructionweekonline.com.